Tonight, the FCC angers net neutrality fans, Facebook buys some moves, and Amazon beats estimates and takes on the delivery companies. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 73 for Thursday, April 23rd, 24th rather, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN and the number two. I'm Sarah Lane, let's get right into the tech feed. Well, Facebook just joined the fitness tracking market by buying Helsinki-based Protogeo Oi, maker of mobile app Moves, which tracks users and determines whether they're walking, running, biking, or even riding public transportation. So why does Facebook want this technology? Well, Mike Isaac over at Recode notes that because tracking people creates a visualized map of activity, the data is perfect for Facebook, where you're going, where you're from, what you do all day, all helps Facebook understand you better and thus target you better. Amazon's first financial quarter results of 2014 are in, and the company reported net sales up 23% to $19.74 billion compared to $25.59 billion last quarter and $16.07 billion in the year-ago quarter. Operating income fell 19% to $146 million in the first quarter compared with $181 million in the first quarter of 2013. But it's been an interesting few months for Amazon with an announced price hike for Amazon Prime, the launch of the $99 Fire TV, and just yesterday, a deal with HBO to get more content for its streaming service. The company has also begun testing its own delivery network for The Last Mile, a.k.a. the final leg of a package's journey to consumers' doorsteps in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York. Delivering its own packages will give Amazon more flexibility over deliveries and help in containing shipping expenses, which grew 29% last year. As a percentage of sales, Amazon's shipping costs have grown each year since 2009. That's according to securities filings from the company. So so with its own trucks, Amazon could also offer same-day deliveries, deliveries late at night, or even at more specific times. Microsoft beat analyst expectation in its third quarter earnings report. It's really an earnings report kind of a week, isn't it? Earning 68 cents per share in the period, under last year's 72 cents per share in the same period, but right around last year's revenue of 20.8. Five billion. This Q3 revenue was at 20.4 billion. The devices and consumer revenue grew 12 percent. Commercial revenue was up 7 percent, with Office 365 growing 100 percent and Azure revenue increasing 150 percent. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said in a statement, "Quote: This quarter's results demonstrate the strength of our business, as well as the opportunities we see in a mobile-first, cloud-first world." Well, just last week, OpenSSL Software Foundation president Steve Marques wrote in a blog post that OpenSSL typically receives about $2,000 in donations per year and has just one employee who works full-time on the open source code. So the existence of Heartbleed, that security flaw in OpenSSL that can expose user passwords and private encryption keys needed to protect websites, might not be such a big surprise after all. Well, that might change. Today, the Linux Foundation announced a three-year initiative with at least $3.9 million to help underfunded open source projects. OpenSSL is at the top of that list. Amazon Web Services, Cisco, Dell, Facebook, Fujitsu, Google, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, NetApp, Qualcomm, Rackspace, and VMware have all pledged to commit at least $100,000 per year for at least three years to the Core Infrastructure Initiative that will identify important open source projects that need help in addition to OpenSSL. Vic Gundotra, head of Google+, Plus, is leaving the company. Despite rumors of friction between Gundotra and other executives at Google, Larry Page noted in a memo to employees that announced Gundotra's departure that the search giant would continue to invest in Google+. Recode cites sources that say current Google+, Plus VP of Engineering, David Bezbris, will take over. What's not clear is how this affects the product moving forward, although TechCrunch claims multiple sources that say Google+, Plus will no longer be considered a product but a platform. 
Coming up, Google Glass is now on sale for everybody. Not so fast, though. And up next, I'll talk with Brad Charcos from PC World. Has the FCC destroyed net neutrality? We're going to get a little bit more into that. But first, let's thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. lynda.com offers thousands of online video courses in software, creative business skills. Maybe you want to learn, I don't know, Lightroom Mobile or how to protect yourself from heartbleed. We hear so much about it or get started with 3D printing. With a lynda.com subscription, as a member, you receive unlimited access to the entire course library. That's so many courses, all at your fingertips. lynda.com works with software companies to provide updated training the same day that new versions hit the market. So you're always going to have the latest skills. You're going to learn from top experts. All of the courses are high quality productions and you might just have a few minutes or maybe you've got all week long you can learn at your own pace on your own terms it's only 25 dollars per month for access to the entire lynda.com course library for 37.50 per month you can subscribe to the premium plan which also includes exercise files and you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash tn2 and access the entire library, over 2,400 courses, completely free for seven days. That's lynda.com slash tn2. All right, Brad Charco, senior writer of PC World, has joined us now. Hello, Brad. Hey, how's it going, Sarah? Very well, thank you. All right, so we said we were going to talk about this whole FCC net neutrality thing. They've got some proposed new rules, and there is, well, there is sort of a fever happening online. What's happening? Well, it's important to note that nothing <laughs> definite is happening yet, but everyone's in a tizzy, and rightly so, because last night, word leaked out of a new proposal that the FCC is going to put out um, the new net neutrality rules. Mm -hmm. um, you might remember that late last year, early this year, the uh, U.S. court system knocked down the old net neutrality rules established in 2010. Uh, and so the FCC has been working hard to create some new ones. And they did, or they have some ones they're going to propose. And the issue is two little words. Um, the original rules established in 2010, said that providers could not engage in unreasonable discrimination against traffic, mm -hmm. whereas the new rules say that you're not allowed to uh, use commercially unreasonable... Uh, reasonableness. Pardon. Commercially... Com commercial it reasonableness. Commercially reasonable. You got it. It almost <laughs> sounds like a made-up term of some kind. So what seems like what's happening here is... The FCC has some proposed, yeah, they've got to they've got to take a stance one way or another. Uh, people who are familiar with how these work technically uh, mm. are, are many are, are are really up in arms about it. Well, the FCC apparently wants to clarify what direction they're going in. In a blog post today, FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler says he wants to set the record straight. He said, to be very direct, the proposal would establish that behavior harmful to consumers or competition by limiting the openness of the Internet will not be permitted. What is the FCC trying to do here? Um, well, I mean, net neutrality is an important issue. It's trying to establish, the FCC is trying to establish guidelines for the way that these broadband providers and Internet providers can interact with these content providers since, you know, so much of the world is going digital these days. Um, the problem with the wording in the proposal that's coming up, the, uh, commercial, the commercial reasonableness is, uh, that it opens to the, the door to, as Netflix did with Comcast, mm -hmm. uh, pay to priority access. So content providers could pay Comcast or Time Warner Cable or whoever to get faster speeds on that network, which is the opposite of net neutrality, the idea, the concept of net neutrality, which is unfettered, equal web access for all. And this new proposal, the key point is that it looks to establish a baseline of uh, internet speeds, a baseline, reasonable level of uh, delivery, and then individual internet service providers will also be able to enter into deals to boost that 
speeds with content providers, which is the reason everybody's up in arms. Do you feel that, you know, you've got, you've got a company, you use Netflix as an example. Netflix, obviously, at certain times of the day, at least in the U.S., we've seen uh, is, is taking up a huge amount of all of the bandwidth of, of, of the entire Internet. Does, does net neutrality, I, I mean, is it, is it dead and, it, and it's just a matter of figuring out how the FCC is going to spin the way that the Internet works in the future? Is there, is there a place for net neutrality given all of the services that people are using? Uh, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, hopefully it's not dead because at the core of net neutrality is equality. Um, broadband providers argue that they're just looking to, you know, make people who make companies that use the most bandwidth help pay for that. But the problem is uh, competition. Say you're an internet startup. Mm -hmm. uh, in the video streaming field, and you want to compete against Netflix or Hulu or whatnot. If Netflix or Hulu, who had these big bankrolls, have already paid Comcast, as Netflix has already done, to deliver faster speeds on the Comcast network, then there's no way that your reasonably baseline company is ever going to uh, stream video quite as fast as Netflix or Hulu does. And that carries over to all kinds of fields, all kinds of everything. It's just the idea that there's basically two tiers of internet access, the haves and the haves nots. And hopefully we figure out a way to keep things equal in my opinion. Obviously there's there's more coming. Uh, the FCC is, this, these are these are proposed um, uh, uh, rules going forward. What's your best guess on, on how this is all gonna shake out? Ugh. I hate to be a pessimist, <laughs> but with, the court striking down what was there before mm -hmm. and the FCC and all the big broadband companies pushing for this, I wouldn't be surprised if some s sort, some version of this law, these rules pass through. Um, hopefully they get enough comments in the open proposal uh, period that they define a very strict, very just definition of commercial uh, reasonableness, because really that's what all this hinges down on. If commercial reasonableness is a very tight definition and you're not allowed to just sell access willy-nilly if you're a broadband provider, then it's essentially still net neutrality. But if it's a loose definition with wishy-washy words that can be interpreted a thousand different ways, um, that could be bad. Brad Chark, a senior writer over at PC World, shedding a little more light on what is going on with net neutrality and the FCC and, and how you should feel about it. Thanks so much, Brad. Appreciate you having me, Sarah. Absolutely. Tell folks where they can find more of your work. You can see me writing daily at PCWorld.com or in the PC World Digital Magazine, which is available for iOS, Kindle, and Android. Excellent. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. All right, finally, hey, everybody, did you hear the good news? Google Glass is available to everybody today, and it's ending the Explorer beta program, and the whole world gets glass. No, actually, that's not happening at all. Here's what happened. Clicking a specific link gave some people access to the Glass order page from Google's April 15th sale, but the Glass homepage doesn't have that product for sale. So what happened? Google says the link that some users are clicking on has gone unedited since that sale back on April 15th, the one day sale. This link was created to accommodate potential explorers who were still in the pipeline from that sale. So the company says it's shutting it down shortly and said in a statement, quote, as always, we will continue to experiment with ways to expand the Explorer program in the weeks and months ahead. Oh, a link glitch. Gotta love them. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. It's the best way to get it every day. And write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, feedback. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.